You know what's better than buying stuff? Not buying stuff, right? Yeah! Yeah, right? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Free stuff! <laughs> Free stuff. I love not spending money. Welcome everyone to the video that will probably destroy your dreams of free bikes, fame and fortune. Once you've recovered from that crushing realization, I'll then help you to set realistic expectations, understand what sponsorship actually is and what it is not, and how best to go about it. This is all coming from someone who has been trying to get sponsored his whole life and now sponsors racers as the manager of the Pink Bike Racing Downhill Team. Strap yourself in, put on your business attire. <sighs> put on your business attire. This is gonna be an informative ride. Step one, what even is sponsorship? This might be obvious, but understanding what it actually is will be important for the rest of the video. Sponsorship is the financial or otherwise assistance of an individual or organization by a sponsor. That means the sponsored person or company receives money, equipment, or favors to their advantage. The sponsor can be a person or more likely a company who will expect something in return. This could just be the warm feeling of helping someone that needs it, or maybe a beneficial tax break. But more often than not, they will require positive exposure for their company. This maybe feels a little dirty or insidious for the young and innocent out there, but it's quite simply the way the world works. Money is exchanged for goods and services and a sponsored rider gets supported or paid to advertise for the sponsor. So what is being sponsored? In essence, it's an advertising job. A pretty good advertising job at that. Step two, so do you actually want to be sponsored? I guess the question is actually, do you want an advertising job? That will depend on why you want to be sponsored. If you want to progress as an athlete and need the support and funding to do so, then yes, sponsorship is the one for you. If you just want free stuff because bikes are really expensive, well, yep, sponsorship could work for you. If you want to be sponsored because you've seen all these athletes and influencers having a great time on social media and you want to live that good life, then stay tuned because it's not quite that simple. Come on. Right, ready? Right. Whoa! <laughs> All right, stop, stop. Yep, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. Yep, I want free stuff. How do I get sponsored? Before you even send off a CV asking for free stickers, you need to figure out a few things. Sponsorship is advertising, so you need to turn yourself into a billboard. There are three things that determine the value of this billboard to sponsors. The better the message that the billboard conveys, the more value it has. The bigger the billboard is, the more people can see it and the more value it has. The location of this billboard has a big effect on which people can see it and that will also affect the value it has. No point in a billboard advertising e-bikes on pink bike. That's a joke. That, that is a, don't pull your fund in. That is a joke. Billboard size can be simplified to your reach or influence. A loner that keeps to themselves, rides by themselves, doesn't create anything and doesn't have an online presence would be the equivalent of a postage stamp on a toothpick. No one is seeing that. If a sick stunt happened in the woods and nobody got the shot, did it actually happen? An outspoken person who engages with everyone they meet, attends events all over the world, generates public interest in their movements, creates excellent photos, articles, and videos, and all sorts of other content on the largest platforms. Well, that's like having your message written in the stars. Everyone will have an opportunity to see that. Interesting fact, I'm actually naturally closer to that first example, and it's a bloody miracle I've gotten to where I am. So, you have to increase the size of your billboard to match your needs in terms of sponsorship. Get out there, talk to people. Hello. Create interesting and unique content. Do well at events. Go on, get to work. Come on, go. Improve your billboard message. This message you have on your billboard is defined by your actions. Are you miserable? Complain all the time about your bike, equipment, and other mountain bikers in general? Well, that's quite common and not a message that people really enjoy hearing or are inspired by. Are you incredibly energetic, and over the top, everything is great, every person is your favorite person, all the bikes are the best thing in the world and you're always smiling even though your eyes aren't? Well, then your billboard will be hard to trust as there's clearly some truth being hidden there. The sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. 
you should absolutely be positive about the sponsor that you have, which is why it's very important to work with companies that you actually believe in. But you also need to be critical to give your opinions and messages credibility. Don't just copy everyone else. In a sea of billboards with the same message, it's hard to stand out. Find your unique take on things, experiment until you find what it is and keep it true to yourself. Choose where to put your billboard. This could mean you decide to compete at a certain discipline, travel and make content in certain areas of the world, focus on a specific division of the biking market, create content on specific platforms. These decisions will influence which sponsors will be interested in your billboard. No much point committing to downhill racing if the company you want to work with doesn't make a downhill bike. You have to choose something you believe in and are passionate about and can develop the skills to do well in. There's a lot of people that want to be sponsored, so you need to figure out how to excel in the area that you are targeting. Can you crush Instagram harder than Windmasters? Can you make videos more widely appealing than Seth Bike Hacks? Can you ride faster than Amri Pierron? Figure out what you're good at and explore that area. Time to get sponsored. You've invested some time and effort, figured out your niche, worked on your message, and now that billboard is looking mm, real nice. Sometimes, if you are lucky, the sponsors will come to you. They've seen you working hard, being a pillar of the community, creating innovative content, getting good results at the events. They want their message up on that billboard. Bing. Good job, this is rare. And usually, you've got to be the one instigating these deals. So get instigating, send emails, call numbers, figure out who is in charge of marketing and get a hold of them. The marketing people at the companies you want sponsorship from probably have no idea who you are and what you can do, so make them understand. It's me. <laughs> it's curriculum vitae time. There's three things you need to convey. Who you are, what you can do for the sponsor, and what you need in return for doing it. You want to do this in an eye-catching and concise way so that you stand out from the rest and make it easy for your value to be seen. Luckily, I have here CV I cooked up back in 2016 when I was trying to get sponsorship from a regional development downhill team. It's not perfect, but let's have a look, give you an idea. Six skills, my coaching company, which had a development team. So the proposal was for 2017, nice bright image. Really catch the, catch the marketer's attention. So then first of all, got to explain who we are. So explain who the team were, what we were doing, kind of how we'd been growing customers with the coaching company, how I was the boss, how I was doing at races, just a general kind of introduction. Uh, for you personal people doing it, you'd probably skip straight to this, which is explaining who you are exactly. So I've given my details, my age, where I live, shown where my social media and kind of Instagram accounts were. I didn't flesh out the amount of followers and things like that. The amount of reach you have is super important, so you probably want to be showing how much you have through that. So a little bit of backstory, but keep it concise. Keep it concise. You don't want to give your whole life story. Unfortunately, people don't care. So just, just a general paragraph or two about who you are. Perfect. Nice little profile and headshot. They want to know, they want to see who they're talking to or who they're reading about. So then up straight into what you can offer. That's what they want to know. What can you give them? You don't go straight into what you want, which is tempting. I want all the bikes. No. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll do that just later, later. So I explained what the team was, who was involved, what my coaching company was and what that could offer to them. And for a personal person, you would say like, right, what can I do? I can make videos about this subject and I can promote your company in this kind of way. I can promote your brand in this kind of way. Um, this is the kind of thing I'm interested in and this is what I can show. So I give some facts and numbers, so the media exposure, saying that I attend all these races, saying that I get these kind of results and saying that like videos and photos, these are the articles I'm in, this is where I post to, all that kind of stuff. You really wanna tell them what you can offer and then show some examples as well. So, got some video examples here. These are some of the popular ones. This is when I first started pushing hard into the video scene. And yeah, some examples for them to have a look at. And I've even made it so you can click on them. And if I had internet out in this park, 
they'd be able to get to the videos easily. You don't want to be like, oh, if you copy this uh, link and paste it, then you'll, yeah, no, make it easy for them. And then I got to what I require. Now, I didn't know what I was worth when I made this, and I was quite nervous about asking for things, and I'd been paying for stuff up until this point. So I offered a lot, and I asked for some free of charge stuff, which at the time I thought was a big ask. And this is a really important thing, is knowing your value. It's very hard, and the only way you know your value is by talking to other people that do it. So find other people that are doing the kind of thing you want to do. So if you're a racer, talk to other racers. If you want to make videos, talk to other video makers and be like, what, what do you charge? What do you ask for? And it's this communication that helps you to understand where you will sit in the kind of grander scheme of things. So I asked for some free of charge bikes, which I was really stoked with at the time. And but when you actually total up the amount of work I was doing and the time I was investing into it, I wasn't really getting much like if you think about the value of the bikes and then selling them on i just didn't know knowing your value very important yeah so to kind of wrap all this up into kind of like a neat concise thing you have to get yourself to a point that your value is enough that you can ask for products and money to do the job so that you're getting paid enough for the time you have to put into it and you only get there by making your billboard better if you are getting some free bikes, but you're sinking in the equivalent of a full-time job into it, it's probably not worth it. But if you do that for a while and get yourself to a point that your billboard is better so that you can get paid for it and actually make money for the time you're putting in, then it becomes worthwhile. And it, I, I can't say when that is for each specific person, but it has to make sense. If it's, an, if it's a passion and you want to do it and you don't mind not getting much for it, which I did for a long time, then that's absolutely fine. But it's not economically feasible to make a living if you're getting free stickers and putting all your time into it. So it's just, it's, it's a bit of a reality check. It's not a dream job for most people. And it takes a lot of work to get to the point that it, be, can, that it can become feasible. And that's a fact. And that might be a bit dis disheartening to some. It's the way it is. And hopefully, knowing that can help to make it possible. <laughs> How to get sponsored. It's not as easy and it's not as glamorous as it seems from the outside. To do it well takes years of experience and hard work, which can ruin what started as a fun hobby for some people. For those that do succeed and find partnerships that allow them to do the things they want to do, ride the bikes they want to ride and complete the goals they've set out for themselves, it's one of the best jobs in the world. It took me 20 years to get there, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Good luck out there. Let us know about your success and failures by tagging at Pinkbike and how to bike on the socials. The other videos in the series are more skill based, so check them out as they're a bit more practical for most people to try out. Okay, we're gonna tag their failure stories of sending CV. Yeah, tried to get sponsored, <laughs> didn't. Thanks, Pinkbike. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get a reply, didn't get a reply. <laughs>